My name is Dr. Eckes. I'm a board certified surgeon that specializes in weight loss surgery, uh, minimally invasive and robotic surgery. And I'm here to try to simplify some things that are in the media. And I can tell you in 2024, it is a very amazing time to be a physician and a patient. There's all these new things out there. There's surgeries, there's medications, there's fad diets. So let's try to break it down and help explain what's available and how these things are different. Uh, the pros and cons of weight loss surgery, and also when you talk about regular weight loss surgery. So things really change in 2021. Uh, it was a pretty amazing year, and Wagovi came out, and the name for this is semaglutide. So semaglutide is a molecule that acts on different receptors in your body, specifically acts on something called GLP-1, and GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide. What we find is in GLP-1, um, this hormone activates it, and it makes people less hungry. It acts on your intestines by slowing things down, acts on the stomach by making it feel fuller, and it acts on insulin. And initially, this was a diabetic medication that we found when given the patients with a good diet and exercise program can help them lose significant amounts of weight. Fast forward um, to 2023, where a new medication got approved. And um, the new medication, of course, is terzepatide or Zepbound. These medications have many different names. You can hear Manjaro, you can hear terzepatide, Zepbound. Um, so it can be very confusing. So, first off, how are these different? Well, when you talk about Wagovi, this acts specifically on GLP 1. When you talk about Zepbound, this has less of an effect on GLP-1, but more of an effect on another hormone called GIP. This can get very confusing. GIP has many names, also known as gastric inhibitory peptide, more commonly known now as glucose-dependent and synthetotropic polypeptide. So, this medication works similar to this, but a little bit different, because in this medication, okay, the GIP works a little bit differently by also um stimulating more insulin to get released okay and it also has some strange effects we know that uh gip1 actually makes your body store more fat but yet it's also causing weight loss so what we're finding is that the effect on insulin is greater than its effect to store fat so bottom line this is a very confusing time to be a patient it's also a confusing time to be a physician because these new medications are coming out so here's what we know we've done some fairly good studies right recently and with the semaglutide we think people are losing about 15 percent of their total weight with their zepatide they're losing about 20 percent of their extra weight so again pros and cons um the benefit of these medications are this overall there's very low risk Okay, um, but there are tons of side effects that we see that usually aren't bad, and those mostly include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, some increased risk of possible pancreatitis and gallstones. These medications also tend to slow down the body's intestines, so maybe they can cause some different problems, such as um, having uh, problems absorbing food, or your intestines may be turning and twisting, or vomiting. Um, but for the most part, they're not bad. We do know that certain people cannot tolerate them. And in general, it's about 10%. 10% on average of people have side effects that are so severe uh, and troubling that they have to stop the medication. The biggest thing we worry about is in my study, we found that uh, it can increase uh, medullary uh, thyroid cancers. So if you're a patient with a history of that or a family history of that, it's a no-no. But on average, they're very appealing. The problem is, of course, <coughs> the cost. These medications are very expensive, usually $800 to $1,300 a month. What we're finding is now, not only can you not get them, but also most insurance companies are not covering it. So, other things to talk about. Weight loss surgery, okay? Weight loss surgery is the staple that has been tested for years and years. We have 30, 40 year, 50 year data on weight loss surgeries. Um, we can talk about this for a long time. And specifically when you talk about weight loss surgery, the most common surgery is something called the sleeve gastrectomy. This is a surgery where we go in, we do put our patients to sleep under general anesthesia and usually in a procedure that's about an hour or so, 
we make their stomach smaller. We take that football sized stomach and we make it small. This surgery has a permanent effect on patients. The benefit being that it's a one time deal. The surgery happens and it changes patients' anatomy. They don't have to do a weekly shot. And this also greatly affects other hormones, specifically a ghrelin hormone that's important for appetite, cravings. After surgery, people say they're just not hungry. And the big benefit being that they don't have to have the maintenance of a once a week shot. But this is a surgery and it does have to be done in experienced hands with close follow up. So, how are we going to break this down and make sense? What do we do? Medications, weight loss. I think it's a good time to really have people rethink how they look at obesity. And as a weight loss surgeon, as someone that has a, a passion for treating obesity, my personal suspicion is that we need to take a look at all these things and use them all. Because what white might work for one person won't, won't work for someone else. So let's kind of summarize things so we can make some sense out of this, okay? Now. When you talk about semaglutide, on average, we're seeing about a 15% weight loss reduction. And that's a pretty good number. Um, again, different names for it. Ozembic, Wagovi, again, these all act on GLP-1. Um, side effects, nausea, vomiting, terzepidide, similar thing. But we found a little bit more weight loss, about 20% weight loss. The biggest problem that we're finding in patients is the availability of this drug, the fact that it's very hard to get. And the biggest thing we see is these medications are made forever. And what I mean by that is the medications work, they're effective. Um, the side effects usually happen in the first couple of weeks and months. After that, they're more better tolerated. But what we find is when patients stop the medications, on average, we think they probably regain about 85% of their weight back. And this can be a very costly thing. So on average, these medications are costing about $9,600 to $15,000 plus a year if you don't have insurance benefits. The problem, I think, is a lot of insurance companies are looking at these costs. They're seeing that people are getting on it. They're getting off it. The pa patients are losing the weight initially, but then it's coming back again. So <coughs> insurance, I think, is trying to figure out how good these medications are long term my biggest hesitation with these medications is we don't have good long term data of 15 years 20 years 30 years like we do other medications and weight loss surgery um, unfortunately we've been through this before in the past we've had medications like for example uh, fenfen which was a medication that caused significant issues with heart uh, problems and heart attacks and pulmonary hypertension and that medication had to be stopped it worked good for weight loss but the problem is it came with other things that we didn't hear about till later so i think there's a role for these medications um, and i think truthfully as someone that really wants to see people do well i think these medications are best used as a way to either optimize patients to help them carry over into a better lifestyle and then try to wean them off the problem is that the pharmaceutical companies want you on it forever, and they're very costly. So when you now talk about weight loss surgery, this is a staple. This is the gold standard for obese patients. Now, again, in order to qualify for weight loss surgery, there's a lot of different requirements. We can talk about it at a different time. But on average, the three most common surgeries are called gastric bypass surgery, sleeve gastrectomy, duodenal switch. When you talk about the most common surgery, that's a sleeve gastrectomy, on average, for most patients, there's a risk of only about 1% to 2% of having a serious complication. These medications act on GLP-1. They act on ghrelin, on PYY-36. There's a whole cascade of hormones that changes. And ultimately, what we find is people have the most weight loss with this, anywhere between 25 to 30% of their total weight loss, which is probably about two times more than you see with most medications, um, three times when you talk about uh, older medications. And the cost is this most patients and actually many patients have insurance benefits for it and it can be little to no cost for patients because insurance companies realize that when they spend a little bit of money on surgery they make their money back because their patients are no longer diabetic on sleep apnea um, machines and they tend to do very well so the cost depending on the procedure is about ten to twenty thousand dollars once okay again comparing that to these medications, we're talking about 
$10,000 to $15,000 a year. Now, what's the take home for all this? Um, as a patient, it's very challenging to try to figure out what to do. The problem is there's no answer that's right for everyone. I think some patients are better off with medications. The majority of those patients, in my opinion, are people that need to lose maybe 20, 30 pounds, that need a little bit of help. The big problem is, are you going to be a patient that's going to be capable of getting this medication, injecting it every week for probably the rest of your life, um, or risk the weight coming back? And then you're in a rebound effect, and then your body is having to struggle between significant weight loss and weight gain. We don't have long-term data, but we think, for the most part, the side effects are pretty low. Um, I tend to like these medications a lot, and I think they're really good in helping people in two specific uh, areas, and that's getting people healthy in preparation for either a surgery, either a weight loss surgery, a hernia surgery, or an orthopedic surgery, and they just need a little help to get to an optimized weight. Um, and also, people have had some weight gain after weight loss surgery. It's a way of giving them some positive reinforcement, but we like to use these medications as a bridge into a permanent lifestyle change because we don't like the majority of our patients being on medications. Um, weight loss surgery does have risks, and if anyone tells you they don't, they do. But for the most, the most part, the risks are way um, less than the potential benefit. So find a program that can help you. If you're interested in learning more, there's plenty of uh, bariatric surgeons, weight loss surgeons, um, and physicians that are happy to help you. There's not one solution for everyone. If you talk about the most bang for your buck, still weight loss surgery is the most effective strategy. The cost is actually, um, given the course of about a year or so, it's cheaper. Um, but are, are you a good candidate for general anesthesia? That's a question you have to ask yourself. The other thing is if you're going to start these medications, are you going to be one of these patients that starts it, doesn't continue it, and end up gaining more weight over the past uh, over the next several years or months because you can't get on it or you're not going to be compliant. So lots of things to think about. Still an exciting time to be uh, in medicine nowadays. Do your own research, um, but it's a great time to be a patient, and we have a lot of tools out there.